Hi, let's do some practice questions on wave behavior. So in this video, we'll include questions from 25 all the way 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Okay, so you may want to pause the video and make sure you finish them all first. A few moments later. Question 25 is very simple. Even if you are in IGCSE, you should know how to do it. So it have given you the wavelength the refractive index end and also the incident angle uh, 30 degree and it asks you to find out the refraction angle so obviously you are going to find uh, the snail's law so which is m1 sine theta 1 and 2 sine theta 2 and just substitute all the things in and i believed uh, it's entering from air yes so uh, m1 could simply be 1 and then sine theta 1 would be the incident 30 degree n2 will be the one that you get so this is n2 and then substitute uh, the r n and you want to find out the answer is 22.887 so we will run it to um, 2 sig fix so 29 degree cos uh, 30 is 2 sig fix so yeah, I think this rule of thumb is simply following that. For part B, uh, the speed of light in glass. So one thing you should recall is the refractive index definition, which people usually just remember snail saw but not remembering the definition. So it's actually N equals to C over V. Uh, if you don't remember whether it's V over C or C over V, uh, just think about this. Refractive index is always larger than 1 because lights travel the fastest in vacuum and nothing else can be you know as fast as vacuum for light to travel so uh, this is why the number here is going to be bigger c is speed of light in vacuum bigger than the velocity in a certain medium so it will be slower so that's how you get a number that's bigger than one so in this case then well we just substitute everything's in so uh, we should get something like 1.89 times 10 to the power of 8, I think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, 8 meter per second. Actually, I think I should take... This is 4 sec fig. And then here, I think this one is actually 2 sec fig only. Uh, speed of light is actually 2, like 2.99 something. So yeah, uh, uh, maybe just 3 sec fig then. Yeah, so 1.9 or 1.90. Part C. The question is asking you to find the wavelength of the light in glass, okay? Not in air, because in air it has been already given to you. So the first thing that you may think of is probably the equation that is V equals to F lambda, because it's quite straightforward. I mean, if you have the V, which is from the answer of B, and then uh, you can find lambda. However, you don't have the frequency, and so that is a problem. Um, but if you try to think a bit deeper, then you should recall that the frequency should remain the same. Why? Because uh, just like all the other ways, whenever you generate that particular wave, the frequency has been set, right? For example, when I'm now speaking to you, the sound wave, no matter what medium it go through, uh, although you should know that uh, if I'm speaking in helium, then my voice will change, but then my vibration in the focal cord will remain the same. I mean, as if I maintain the same tone. And so the frequency doesn't really get changed, uh, no matter what medium it is, it doesn't really care. So frequency will remain the same as in the one you can get somehow from the information. So this is a hint to help you to solve this question. And so what I recommend you to do is to label it carefully. So this V is referring to the velocity in glass. Lambda is the wavelength in glass also. Frequency doesn't really matter. And then you can actually simply apply the same equation for air. So let's do it. V A for air and then frequency lambda A for wavelength in air and so the whole thing is very straightforward now 
So after substituting and use your calculator to find the answer, the answer should be 4.306. So let's take it 4.3. Uh, 10 to the power of negative 7. Notice that actually you don't have to press the order of magnitude because 10 to the power of 8 will cancel out and then this would simply carry on uh, to that. So I, I didn't press any order of magnitude at all. So you would just find 4.3 and you just add uh, the order of magnitude. So this should be in meter because all these things are in meter. So this will be the final answer for the wavelength in glass. 26. Uh, you have given the frequency and between two points, the distance is 3 meter. Determine how long it will take the light to travel. Um, it's just very straightforward. So V equals to displacement over time. So V is speed of light. And then S is simply 3 meter. And so this T is going to be very, very, very small. So it's going to be 10 to the power of negative 8. Um, you don't even need a calculator to find it out. Part B is asking you how many waves you can fit, so how many cycle, more precisely, because I guess that's what it means. So um, obviously you have to find out how long one wavelength is first. So let's just simply apply the wave equation, speed, and then frequency is given, and then you can find the wavelength which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meter and then uh, you I don't know why they want to find this so um, but that's okay all right so we have total of 3 meter and each of these is that tiny and so you can find the number n to be 6 times 10 to the power of 6 simply that many times of cycle Question 27, obviously it looks mathematically challenging because you have to deal with the geometry. So uh, you have given and you have given the angle for the yes, incident angle and you know it's 4 cm for the glass thickness. It wants you to find the deviation D which is clearly shown on the diagram. And so um, obviously what you need to do is to draw clearly um, what kind of like lines you can refer to. Um, so obviously you don't want to draw like D simply here, but moving it to here, okay, as D. And then these 4 cm uh, will be the same as these 4 cm, okay? And then this, you should label it, is it this one? Um, to be, wait, no, it should be the one that's sticking with the normal, so this one should be the refracted angle okay so um, this should be the very initial things that you should draw uh, on the diagram oh there's one more thing um, because this is opposite angle so this is going to be 40 and so this is going okay I'm, I'm going to draw with another color so this angle small angle is going to be 40 degree minus uh, and so let's think about our plan. Uh, eventually we want to find D. That means we have to use the angle. So we have to find R. And with angle, you can't just find the length directly with just one angle. You also need another length. So I would say finding out this common line. And then this can be found by this and this angle. Okay, so this is our plan. Wait, I'm teaching you some serious mathematics now. To save the time for writing, I've done my calculation already. So let me explain to you step by step. So like I said, we want to find the refracted angle first. So simply use the Snell's law. Uh, substitute the things that you know, you'll be able to find the angle 26.3147. You want to take more digits because uh, this is not the final answer. Uh, next is to consider this triangle okay and to want to find the common side which i call it l and so uh, it will be cosine r and one thing that i should um, scope the question is this is 4.0 cm but then the question itself here is at 4.00 cm so uh, missing one sig fig on the diagram so let's just take it as three sig fig so when i convert it back to meter 
then it's going to be this one 0 0.0400 and then after your calculation uh, you will get a number like this the last part will be looking at these triangle uh, which include the D and also the L and then the angle is 40 minus R and so yeah just like what you can see here uh, substitute in and then you'll find the answer like this one and I'll run it to free sig fig so this would be the final answer question 28 it has given you the speed of sound in air and also in water and it asks you the angle so that there is no sound it will be transmitted into the water so you can draw a diagram something like from air to water and then there's a certain angle going in and nothing will go inside the water you just reflect this is exactly the idea of total internal reflection so in case you don't remember that you can refer to another video of mine uh, which I, I'll teach in IGCSE but this video doesn't really exist at this point when I'm making this video if I made it I'll put down the link in the description below you can refer to that but anyway the idea is very simple you just have to think about the refracted angle is 90 degree and so uh, like I always tell you you can just apply this Snell's law so don't don't try to use those formula about critical angle directly what I would suggest you to do is to use this and substitute the refracted angles to be 90 degree and the incident angle to be the critical angle which is the angle you want to find for the answer in this question but one problem that you may find out is you don't actually have the value of n1 and n2 and so what you can do is to relate them to velocity and so that is basically the equation that you will have in the data booklet n1 over n2 and then v2 over v1 and so we can just rearrange it so that it becomes sine theta 2 sine theta 1 equal to v2 over v1 yeah or you can deduce it yourself if you want to it's very simple and so uh, you will want to label the air and water to be 1 and 2 just so that you won't get confused and so just to do everything in theta 2 is the 90 degree the refracted angle theta 1 is the incident which is also the critical angle here v2 is going to be the water and v1 is going to be the one for air just simply use your calculator okay you should find something like 13.1009 and so let's run it to 13.1 simply question 29 plane a wave so um, like this simply of uh, wavelengths 1 cm approach and aperture which opening is also 1 cm so this is something that you want to recall and maybe remember uh, because it's going to be quite useful for you um, whenever the slit that means the aperture is the same size of the wavelength this is when the diffraction is going to be the greatest and so it asks you to draw the wavefront so uh, what you can do is uh, I'll draw one more here okay hopefully this will be kind of like equally spaced okay and then afterwards it will simply spread and I still have to remain the wavelength to be constant oops not really good okay sorry I try my best uh, like this hopefully anyway so I hope you understand that this will be 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm okay maintaining the same interval the wavelength and you should also make sure this is going to be uniform and this is going to be uniform and symmetrical like you don't want to get uh, say this one to be slightly longer that doesn't make sense right so it should be a very nice line at the edge of this question 30 is said now the wavelength changed to 1 mm so it was 1 cm and now it's 1 mm 10 times smaller and then the aperture size become 20 cm so 20 times larger um, size is actually an idea uh, that is relative so if I 
maintain my drawing for the wave to be like the one that I did but then this time this is going to represent 1 mm the thing about the aperture size is going to be like nowhere near that is visible actually uh, and so you can imagine simply the wave cause there's actually nothing blocking them and so they don't actually have any change in their waveform question 31 is my favorite question among all these questions and so what it's asking is the house which is supposed to receive the radio signal uh, normally when you receive radio you, you I mean you can hear it you know loud and clear but then because of the mountain here it reflects a signal and then it will have destructive interference so that's why the question says uh, the reception is very poor because it has destructive interference and so the amplitude got much much lower in theory it should be zero and so you can imagine what happened is simply this is a radio tower sending out the radio and so the house receive it supposedly at the same time the wave will also continue going to this and then it will reflect it back to the house and they will have superposition um, one thing that they also ask you to pay attention is phase change so obviously the mountain is uh, will be acting like the fixed end and therefore will be a, there will be a pi phase change uh, right here given that it is the shortest possible distance then uh, we can deduce that the path difference because the first path difference you can have for destructive interference is going to be 0 0.5 lambda but then it cannot be 0 0.5 lambda because pi which is 180 degree is already half the cycle so you you cannot have this unless the mountain is next to the house which is not is not really realistic in this case so that means the shortest possible path difference for this case is going to be not 0 0.5 but 1.5 lambda okay so if you understand this then the rest should be quite easy so let's try to draw the distance because uh, they want you to find the distance between the house and the mountain so just here right this is the x or whatsoever uh, maybe let's call it d is easier right that they want you to find the wave actually travel from radio tower to the house this is the distance for the first wave and then the second wave actually travel from the radio tower to the mountain back to here so um, if you really just comparing their path difference then the path difference for these two uh, obviously these will got cancel out each other and you actually travel the wave actually travel for an extra of 2d okay because it go from here back to here so it's going to be 2d and so we can say path difference which is supposed to be 1.5 lambda okay I don't why, why, I don't why, I don't know why I, I write again should equal to 2d but because of the phase difference or phase change I should say um, therefore the path difference should actually equal to 1.5 lambda equals to 2d plus that half lambda or you can just take away this and therefore this equation becomes simply 1 lambda equal to 2d the distance uh, between the house and the mountain and so that means the final answer obviously because uh, 1 lambda is 1 6 is 0 0 and therefore d is going to be 800 meter if you still don't quite understand after finding out this answer uh, then you can also double check it visually with the diagram so think about this think about this so the wave the first one travel to the house again it doesn't really matter how far the radio station to the house because this the second wave also travel the same uh, path 
So it go from the radio station bypassing the house, maybe just some sort of reflection, and therefore it get back to this. And since we find out this is 800, then that means the total distance that it actually cover for path difference is going to be 1600 meter which if you don't have this if you forget about the phase change then this should be a constructive interference ideally but then yeah you, you can't just say oh we don't have phase change I mean there is a phase change uh, when it hit the mountain and therefore uh, it will become 1.5 lambda instead and and that's how you get the destructive interference and if you are still thinking oh can it be shorter then uh, thinking about maybe say how about 400 then okay if this is 400 then that means the total path difference is going to be 800 meter only for the return trip also and then uh, together with the half phase change then if this is really the distance, 400 meters is really the distance between the house and mountain, then the result shouldn't be no signal. It should be very, very good signal. It should be constructive interference instead. So that doesn't match with the situation. Okay, so that is all for our practice questions here. Uh, just one advice for you. Uh, in the future, the question may not remind you that there is a phase change. So you should be aware that whether there's a phase change or not in the reflection. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.